If your WordPress site matters, your host matters. You can have rock solid, fast, and secure WordPress hosting for a fraction of what you pay for your cable bill. WP Engine can increase your conversions and protect your WordPress site from hackers. Learn more at wpengine.com slash L-Y-W. This is Love Your Work. The show will help you find the clues that will lead you to your calling. I'm David Cadavy, and on Love Your Work, you know I bring in entrepreneurs and creators that have broken away from the pack. And this week's episode is a bit of an experiment. I've had Nir Eyal, author of Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products, on the show before. He and I had a little debate about digital distraction back in episode 21. And Nir and I have been exploring new book ideas independently, and we've been practicing writing about those ideas somewhere within that space of digital distraction. And I've been leaning more into the productivity space, which you've heard a lot of on this podcast. So we recently had a call where Nir and I discussed where we were headed, how we're testing out new ideas, and how we might position new ideas. And we figured just in case we'd record the conversation in case it happened to sound like a good podcast episode. And I think it will make a good episode, especially if you're an aspiring author who wonders how to home in on the right book idea. We'll talk about writing for medium.com and why it's such a powerful tool for testing out new ideas. I'll get very, very specific about my process for analyzing ideas I write on Medium and how I decide what's worth pursuing further. And we'll also talk about the psychology of book positioning, book marketing, and coming up with titles for books. So it'll be a bit of an extension of the book marketing conversation that I had with Tucker Max on episode 29. Now, note that I say we, and I'm aware that I ended up dominating the conversation, and this is just something that I happen to do sometimes when I get too excited about something. Still, it should be useful, and if you have no book writing aspirations at all, it will perhaps be an uh, unsettling behind the scenes look at how the sausage is made in book publishing. Here's the episode. When you're billing your clients, the last thing you want to waste your time and mental energy on is creating invoices. FreshBooks customers get paid an average of five days faster. Get your free 30-day trial at cadavy.net slash FreshBooks. record on this and you you know that my my microphone sounds like a robot sometimes so oh okay in about 40 so I just minutes talk through it or should i tell you yeah you should definitely let me know because it'll, it'll okay. totally be ruined out of this microphone is it's a cheap microphone and uh i, I don't know i feel like the sound is pretty good but it uh it's it's it goes a little haywire oh so, okay yeah mm-hmm. so you've uh so you've you've seen some of my writing I have. You're 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 everywhere. It's fantastic. I love it. It's good stuff. You, okay, so I'm I'm interested in the perception then of somebody who uh, is from on the outside. Then where is everywhere? Where have you? What have you? What have you ever seen? <laughs> Let me tell you how great you are. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please yeah, start uh, already. <laughs> tell me about all the things that you like about what you've. You know, yeah, about me. Tell me. Tell yeah, me. please. <laughs> no, I, do you think I, that I I'm, do you like you mean, my hair actually. the way it is? Do you, do you think that I'm good looking? Or, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that stuff and more. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I've seen you on Medium and uh, your articles are getting shared and liked and uh, it's great. I'm just so, so happy to see it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, actually the, uh, the conversation that we had that um, that, well, that wasn't a podcast conversation and I, there's no, I don't plan to make this a com- podcast conversation either but you know it could be um the conversation we had was really helpful because i had worked all those months on that uh book proposal mm-hmm. and then i hadn't published anything for like three or four months oh, and yeah. then i started publishing stuff and then i realized that nobody gave a shit about what i was saying <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm so glad that I could take uh, a little bit of credit for pushing you. I remember you when we talked, like the context of the conversation was like, "Oh, I want to do a big old book." Yeah, uh, yeah. And I was like, "Don't do a big old book. Do lots of little blog posts." Mm. And uh, I'm really glad to see you 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 took at least a little bit of that advice to heart. Uh, of course, you did totally. all the heavy lifting of actually writing the articles, which is the hard part. Well, it's um, been really awesome because like there were so many uh, different ideas. Like, my entire approach to the things that I wanted to say and the things I wanted to say. 
I guess I was a little bit in the dark as to like how to get people to pay attention to things these days because mm -hmm. last time that I had anything that was really popular was Hacker News days, and that was a totally different world. And then mm. uh, Medium has been just a great a great testing bed because you can put stuff out there and uh, you can get highlights and recommends and you can, you can see like what specifically are people reacting to, what specifically is resonating with people. Right, right. It's really cool. I mean, are you doing anything special in terms of getting it noticed or get it, like giving it any kind of bump of attention? Is it is that something you're you're doing, or do you just write and post? Um, no, I pretty much just I pretty much write and post, and I share on fa uh, Facebook and I share on Twitter. And actually, mm -hmm. I have a, I have a bit of a a um, a process to it, which I'll, I'll write a post. I try to keep them around five hundred words. Mm-hmm. Which I has been great at making myself shorter winded and mm -hmm. making things more punchy and and uh, easier to react to, and then mm -hmm. at, at like a certain point, I, I kind of look at I, re, I look at the the recommendation ratio, and mm -hmm. I want to see at least ten percent recommendation ratio that like the number of views that the if it has a, a thousand views. Which actually is quite a bit. Then um, they better have a hundred recommends. If it has hundred, if it has hundred views, it better have at least ten recommends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I noticed there's a little bit of a velocity to that. And then at that point, I've become a uh, an author in so many different publications on Medium, like The Mission, which I think is the most read one that isn't a Medium publication, and various others. Just being invited uh, over time after writing, I just accepted pretty much every invitation I got. Mm. And so now that I'm a, a, a you know, a, a contributor to any of those publications, like the mission, I can write something and I, I wait and make sure that it's people reacting to it decently. And then I put it in, in the mission. Mm. And then, so wait, do you, you know, do you, if it doesn't get the, the ratio you want of 10%, then would you do something differently? Do you change anything? Uh, yeah, then I just go, what I do is I go into my room and I shut the door and I turn off the lights and then I get into bed and I cry all day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And that magically makes it uh, popular. <laughs> that magically makes it popular. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I guess I, uh, it, it's weird because I, I hate writing. That. <laughs> I like, I have, <laughs> I have a, uh, I have, I've made a habit out of it. Like for two months, I made a habit of writing a five, writing and public, conceiving of, writing and publishing a 500 word article first thing in in the morning every day every weekday mm -hmm. i did that for two months and there wasn't much reaction to that but now i've got it to where i do it pretty much tuesdays and thursdays and i, I totally dread it you know i'm like mm -hmm. in bed mm -hmm. that morning and like oh, i don't want to get out and do it and then i go up to my computer and i start writing and I'm like i don't even know what the hell i'm writing and then eventually Sometimes it'll start make sense, start to make sense, and sometimes I'm just like cringing. I'm like, I can't believe I've, I'm publishing this piece of garbage. <laughs> mm, mm. And but it, you do it anyway. And I yeah, and I do it anyway. And sometimes the reaction is is better than I expect. That's stuff awesome. Like that. That's awesome. And so so you so you don't actually so if it if it's crap and people aren't reading it, you don't go back and try and make it better. Um, there have been times where. You know, I'm sitting down and doing this all in one sitting. So sometimes I go to the gym afterwards or something and, and, and maybe I'll think of a better title or a better angle for the title and I might change the title. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. might do that stuff sometimes. Or, mm -hmm. But then, you know, there's always tomorrow. I can write about the same concept in a different way yeah. or with a different and title. Then you, and then you put it, oh, that's interesting. So you'll, you'll sometimes just do a whole new draft on the same theme? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of overlap going on. A lot. It, it was easier earlier on because I had a lot of backed up thinking that I had done when I spent those few months just writing to myself in, mm -hmm. in the proposal writing process. And so there was a lot mm -hmm. of different ideas that could be chopped up and, and spit out as 500 word, um, as 500 word things at that point in time. And so... Sometimes I write something and I, I notice like, oh, a lot of people highlighted that sentence. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Well, I'll go, I'll just, I can write a, an article about that. 
about that sentence. That's yeah. awesome. That's really good. Which huh. doesn't necessarily it, always go in the in the same direction. Like I think sometimes there's ob certain observations or something that like don't make a good article, but that do make a good observation in the middle of a. Right, yeah. right. But once in a while, if a bunch of people highlight something and say, oh, that's interesting, that it could make for another article, that's really, that's a great tip. Well, yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I think that th th this, this for me is how my creative process always goes, right? Like, I have to do the, it's one thing I like about doing the podcast is like, I get to have the conversations, I get to do everything ad hoc, and then I, and then watch the patterns emerge. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. that's where you start to find the things that you can dig deeper on, and which you know I guess is kind of the way your book your book got so popular, right? You were writing about this stuff. Were you trying to, you know, why were you writing about this this stuff? Yeah, it was just interesting to me. It was I had I had questions on my mind that I wanted to address, and I just kept writing about it. But what, I think what's cool about Medium, I, I think when. When I first started writing, Medium didn't exist, and it sounds like when you first started writing, and and you know we were kind of keeping our fingers crossed for the Hacker News gods to pick us up and 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 get it popular. But if it wasn't for that, we we nobody read our stuff. Yeah, and I think it's a real testament to the to the to the platform of Medium in that uh, if stuff is reasonably interesting, it it is kind of a meritocracy in that it gets. It gets seen, it gets spread, it gets uh, read eventually, and that's that's really interesting. I mean, that's I think Ev would be really happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it is. I think it's really amazing, and I um, I get a sense that there was a a, a big wave going on around April mm. or May, and that maybe people aren't spending as much time reading it now as they as the, that could just be that my posts aren't as popular. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or I've gotten complacent where, like, I'm looking at posts and, like, because I read a lot of those posts on, on the podcast. And uh, mm -hmm. and so to do so, I'll, I'll look through and say, like, all right, well, what did well? And put on the podcast. Yeah. And, like, well, I mean, this one only had, like, 3,000 views. Mm. You know, it only had it only had 300 likes. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> I know. Right. And I'm, like, looking at that going, ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is good enough to, to, to make it to the next level. <laughs> do you, do you think that uh, publishing it in the mission d is is a big boost? I mean, would it yes. is that part of the relative to relative to just me publishing it and not having it in right. a publication? I think right. it's totally a big boost. I mean, it has over 100, you know, has 150,000 or so readers. I'm also a um, I'm also contributed to the startup, which is another yeah. great big medium publication. However, I have I'm not sure how their editorial process goes, and I guess I should I should probably just email and ask. I think it's Ali that 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 runs it, and mm. uh, is it? I just had stuff that I'll submit, and then it just mm. never gets published, mm. and it just and I like or come across it months later and be like, oh crap, they never published this, and so I'll just mm. change it and, and say, all right, well, I'll put it in the mission, and then 24 hours later, it's up. Yeah, so it's I kind of it sucks that you can only choose mission. one. That that's kind of a pain. It's like this or that. Yeah, it would be nice if you could just be like, all right, whoever whoever can do it first. But yeah, or whoever's the biggest, like bid on it or I don't know, something like that. Yeah, and, and every, once, yeah, every once in a while there will be smaller publications where I'll write something that's a little more different for a different niche. Or, or not, yeah. not that I'm always trying to niche things, but um, sometimes, you know, I, I, I've explored a lot of different topics mm -hmm. as well. Like my most popular post is like this really emotional one about uh, you know somebody who died and and um, and it 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 has a technological bent to it, but uh, that's my most popular one by far. It has 107,000 views or something like that. It got picked up by Upworthy. Um, it was just all over the place, and mm. um, so that's been interesting too. Is 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 deviating from the things that I was writing about in the book, or it. It's it's in some ways it's a deviation, but it is also still exploring this topic of the intersection between life and technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it does make me wonder if there's something there that I'm maybe just like a little too afraid to to explore. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're holding back on stuff that is is not in the same vein as what you've been writing on, so you don't want to write about it. Well, it's risky or it's harder, right? Like if I write mm -hmm. a productivity book it will you know it, there's at least 
it can at least fall back on the fact that it's a productivity book, right? And mm -hmm. I have somewhat of an audience, like, you know, some people will buy the book. Mm -hmm. Now, if I write a book that's a little bit more exploratory, say it's essays that are exploring the relationship between life and technology or, or something like that, that's a lot riskier, right? It has, it has the potential to reach a much wider audience, but it's really, it's a, it's a lot of a crapshoot, you know? It, I'm not like mm -hmm. a writer for the, I don't write like, like, um, these great personal essays for the New Yorker or the New York Times or anything like that. It's, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's risky. Now, it, it's interesting to me. I still explore those things now, especially after having some of it become successful. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of the stuff I'm, I'm exploring. So, so speaking of, I'm really curious to hear why. Last time you talked, we talked to each other. We were, we were, you were telling me that you were thinking about writing this book about uh, managing technology, and now yeah, it sounds yeah. like you don't want to write that book anymore. What, what happened? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that uh, I think that a lot of the observations that you made, or I think you were basically saying, I think there's a lot of problems in making this a marketable book. Mm. And uh, and now that I've thought about it, now that I've gotten what well, one writing on Medium and getting more of a sense of like what people want to read and what people react to and mm. what people will listen to, I've gotten mm. a lot of sense of that. You know, like if you tell people. Oh, this is why we should be paying for Facebook. Like, nobody, eh, not too many people want to read that article. Like, right. it's yeah. an inconvenient thing to to read. Um, and also, there was a conversation on the podcast that I had with Tucker Max about book marketing, and we really got deep into like, why does somebody write? Why does somebody buy a book? And when somebody buys a book, what? Uh, what causes them to share it mm -hmm. and you know thinking about that sort of stuff it, it is it's a tough angle it's tough it's, it's tough to think like oh here's this book about combating digital distraction i think that yeah. maybe maybe playing more of the we can get to kind of what i'm thinking about now i guess but um but thing making it distraction focused it's like people either want to have their their beliefs confirmed the the sky is falling and here's all the reasons why um yeah. or what, such as the case with like the shallows um mm -hmm. they're not they're, it's not really big on like oh technology technology is great and it's actually making us smarter i don't know if that's done s super well that's clive thompson's book smarter than right. you think right and then um if it comes to being like oh hey you don't have the self-control to combat your um, bad technological habits, here's a book to help you with that. That starts to become a posture that people aren't comfortable with shelling out the money, which I think is what you were getting at last time we talked. Is that? Yeah, accurate? yeah. Well, it's part of it. I mean, I have got so many questions, so many thoughts swirling around my head. But one one thing I wanted to talk about first is like, what was the key takeaway from the Tucker Max conversation about why people buy books and? Um. I think for me the key takeaway is, or the thing that I'm noticing more is like, that when somebody buys a book, they want to say something about themselves to mm. themselves. And when they recommend a book to a friend, they want to say something about themselves to that friend. Right. right? Like if you're right. like, hey, you got to read this book. It's called The Small Penis Owner's Handbook. Nobody is going to, like, the uh, book's not going to sell. Funny. Right? It's like, funny because it's so funny because I own a copy of that one. Oh, you do? Okay. It's, actually, <laughs> it's a pretty good book. Um, I actually am the author. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. Yeah, so, so you know, right? You haven't told any of your friends about that book. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, as much as it helped you you, you, you know, you did buy it. Like, it didn't spread because you didn't tell anybody about it, right? So mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. that has to be... You know, if somebody writes, if somebody buys Getting Things Done, what are they saying to themselves? Like, what is the almost hypnotic kind of message that they're giving to themselves is like, oh, getting things done. I'm a person who gets, who wants to get things done, who wants right. to be better, who, um, and it's not a book that's like, stop being scatterbrained, loser. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it comes from a more positive, um, Self improvement place, which I think is why that's right. like, there's this whole category of self improvement books, right? Um, right. And so that's where I think that you know there's proven categories like productivity, where you can write 
you write any write any book on productivity, I imagine like somebody will buy it just by virtue of it showing up in Amazon search results somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think that insight around um, a book has to has to be an aspiration. I think that's a great insight. I really, I think <laughs> I think that's absolutely true. That I guess the the struggle in a way is like you don't want to sell out, right? You don't want to not write something because it's not going to be commercially successful. On yes. the other hand, obviously. You know, we need to. We, you know, it, it, it's it's a gauge of demand as much as it is of market potential. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I I, I totally agree with it. I'm totally I, I'm struggling with that as well as like I got intros to a lot of um, agents, um, including from you. Thank you. Yeah, and sure. You talk. You talk to Christy. Y- yes, I'm. I mean, I'm starting to get like confused as to like who I did talk to. Yeah, I believe I did talk to. <laughs> Krishi or, or somebody in her in her firm, and then okay, good. Um, yeah, it was all like lukewarm response from from mm. most of them. Now the, the the like the the positive side is that they did a, most, a lot of them did respond, right? <laughs> like mm. yeah, uh, at least like so many people probably send tons of query letters and never get any sort of response. And I did get responses, and I even got you know one sent me some. Um, some proposals from some of his clients and said, you know, if you just make this more focused, um, then we can talk again. And then there was another that, like, actually read the proposal and, and, made, and took the time to make really thoughtful suggestions that I am starting to develop on. But that was the end of the conversation, really. It was just like, okay, here's these suggestions – I kind of made a response, to them, and then they're like, "All right, well, that's cool. Well, you know, hope to hope to see a, a new version of the proposal sometime." So that was mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. that. I haven't had a an agent kind of say say, "Oh, well, let let me let me help you. Let's let's do this together." I don't know if that's something right. agents do. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen them do it. It sounds it sounds like it would be a. Uh, it sounds like now the ball's in your court. Yeah, yeah. They want they want something they can sell right away, which is what. Um, yeah, I had Ryan Holiday take a look at at the proposal as well, which was extremely valuable feedback. Um, I don't know; we probably already talked about that, uh, but no, I don't think we did. Yeah, uh, um, well, I guess part of the, the thing that came out of that conversation was really about the angle, right? Is like mm-hmm. taking taking my origin story. Why am I the person to write a book? Um, on it, whatever topic that this book is about, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, I think Ryan might have had a little bit of a bias given his own story of like, this should be kind of an expose on the dirty tactics that companies use to distract you, um, because obviously what his, his book, Trust Me, I'm Lying, you know, really, really great. I think that's like the the angle. Uh, that angle worked really well for him. I think that's like a part of my story. Is like I worked in advertising. I worked as a designer. I didn't really like the. Yeah, I felt really uncomfortable by the the economics of the matter. Mm-hmm. And you know, then I ended up working with Dan Ariely to work on a a uh, product which has features that ended up in Google Calendar, and. Um, you know, now I live in Colombia in part because I find it a place where I can focus a lot better. Um, yeah. So there's that there's that little bit of an origin story, and uh, it's certainly, yeah. If I'm if I'm going to try to like craft the book by template to to be like what a a well selling book should be is like, you know, it should be written by some university professor who went to an Ivy League school and um, et, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that hasn't been my path. So right, something right. a little bit hmm. ballsier or, uh, I, I don't know, something, I feel like something a little sloppy in a way. Hmm, hmm. Interesting. What did you, what, I want to go back to something you said earlier around the writing so much on Medium helped reveal what people really want to read about. Mm-hmm. What, what is it? What did you learn? 
And, and how did you learn it, actually? Was it just by the sheer fact that you wrote something every single day? Is that how you learned it, or was there something else? Well, this is something I'm always thinking about, and this is something that I think in, some, in a lot of ways it holds my writing back, but when it finally, when things finally converge, then it, be, it makes my writing that much better, is that I'm mm -hmm. always really trying to find like the entry point into the mind of the reader mm -hmm. and realizing that whatever it is that you want to say, usually you're not going to get them to take it by just saying it, right? You have to have the, the Trojan horse, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm to think about like my most popular article is about uh, or actually an article I wrote recently yes you can leave the North America bubble mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it is about life and technology and it is about the way that technology shapes our lives but the entry point into it is something that like you can see somebody sharing it on Facebook like if I had just written um, I moved to the third world for a better life then it becomes, starts to look like, well, here's this privileged person that went to go live somewhere that's cheaper. And, you know, meanwhile, many people are, it, it, it's, it's not, it, it becomes a little bit unclear. If you try to imagine, okay, so this is one of the tr my tricks, I think, is I try to imagine somebody sharing it on Facebook. And what is the mm. subtext of their sharing? And Tucker and I talked about this, too. That, you know, if, 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 you, if you share the, yes, you can leave the North America bubble, you were saying, like, I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, th I, I can relate to the, the things that this author um, observed about his experience living in another country. I am cultured. I am not a, um, a closed-minded North American that doesn't bother to learn any new languages, that never leaves the country, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. sounds it sounds like really demeaning when I when I say it that way, but but I mean I I, I yeah anyway so it, but it, it's true like you have to be able to if somebody's going to share something they want to they need to be able to say something about themselves with that and I've I've had yeah. other things I've written where like I wrote a book or I wrote a a blog post about uh, you know working for a Silicon Valley startup and getting paid a lot and looking at my paycheck and kind of being like well, where the where the fuck did this money come from? This doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't feel like I earned this. And that was like, mm. it wasn't a hit, but it was a, it was like a, a, a dark, uh, what's the, what's the word? Dark social. I think it was like a, maybe a dark social hit where it's like people didn't want to share it on their Facebook or their Twitter because they're afraid their boss might see and realize that they don't like their jobs, um, mm -hmm. which was, you know, observations some people had, had told me, but at the same time, I was getting tons of like personal messages um, saying, wow, thanks for sharing the story. I can totally relate to this. I know how you feel, et cetera. And so uh, there's different mm -hmm. dimensions. And I think, that, I think that it depends. And I don't think that just because somebody will click on an article or share it on Facebook, that that means that they'll, that they'll buy a book on that topic. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, at least not, or at least not in the way that it's, that it's packaged. Uh, yeah. So that's I like that. That's a good tip. So, about. yeah, would it be share, Would would someone want to share this on Facebook? Yeah, and what what would they say? You know, would you share mm -hmm. it on Facebook if you were sharing it on Facebook and you hadn't written it? Mm -hmm. What would you say? And that's uh, and it's 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 amazing too if you just scroll through your Facebook feed, and you and you imagine the subtext of what people are saying as they're sharing everything. Mm -hmm. it, it's a really a paradigm shift for me. Yeah, that's very interesting. Huh, I'm going to write that down right now. We're going to take a quick break. Remember when you used to enlist your friends to help you move? You'd round up a bunch of them and waste an entire Saturday giving them hernias and all for a couple slices of pizza. I remember the first time that I hired movers. I wondered to myself, why, why, why? had it taken me so long to realize what a good deal this was. A few hundred dollars to save my friendships and not lose my deposit by driving the corner of my couch through the drywall? Yeah, that was worth it. Sometimes you just grow out of the scarcity mindset. Like the time that I grew out of my $5 a month hosting plan. I think it happened 
at 3 a.m. on a Saturday night while I was busy picking malware links out of my templates. I moved to WP Engine and I never looked back. WP Engine is not your $5 a month hosting plan where your site is left vulnerable to hackers and you have to worry about keeping it up to date yourself. Mindset shift. WP Engine costs a fraction of what your cable bill costs. If you want your site to succeed, you've got to invest in a good host. WP Engine can increase your conversions and protect your WordPress site from hackers. Learn more at wpengine.com slash L-Y-W. Cool. All right, so what's the next book, or what did you morph into that, uh, that's gonna, that you're going to do instead of the, the book you killed? Well... I mean, I didn't necessarily kill the book. So, like, one of the some of the feedback I got was you killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I killed it. No, but one of the, the feedback that I got was just all right. So, so the book that I the proposal that I had was like this this terrible, terribly overdone metaphor that I created of like how um, how doing mentally heavy work is like riding a bicycle and that there's different parts of the bike ride that uh, you need to be sensitive to and and that you know you need to get your your own productivity cycles in tuned with the tools that you're using and in tuned with the rhythm of the world around you now even as I say that I'm like okay yeah it, it makes sense but it's not it's not crisp it doesn't it doesn't come off as like a crisp book idea where would you imagine here's another trick I do if someone's going to recommend your imagine somebody's recommending your book to a friend at a party and what are they saying mm. or right. Right. or when they're telling your story they're going to be they're, they're saying oh there's this guy who yada 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 and like that they have to be able to say that in like a clean sentence for your for your idea to spread. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. And actually I saw that, uh, that was reinforced by a talk I saw at uh, podcast movement. There were these, these, um, these gals who do this podcast called criminal and they tell, it's a great podcast. I've listened to it since and they tell stories and that was what their talk was about was stories and, and about how, when they craft a story, they have to think. They think about that way. It's like, oh, there's this guy, there's this gal who X. What what, it, what was it that they did? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's what makes us you know, like stories are so powerful. And so your own story right. as an author needs to be a part of of the book a lot of the times. Right. Right. Yeah. If it's not uh, easily understood, it's not easily shared. So it has to story. Story is that that vehicle to get something into someone's brain yeah. enough to be able to, yeah. Another, another trick is pictures. I think that's an underutilized hack, oh, okay. right? That like, I think that really worked for me with hooked is that people could draw the hook, right? Oh, like, yes. You know, they do a two by two and then, you know, I had this acronym of Atari that stands for a hook stands, has four mm. parts, a trigger, an action, a reward investment, Atari. And like that actually made it kind of easy to, to teach others, mm-hmm. um, and so that's definitely something I'm going to do on my next book <laughs> if I and, figure well, out. Well, and the, the image of a be. hook in in general. Too. I think there's like, I've read a little bit about NLP, but I don't totally mm. grok it. But I understand that there's these ideas of images or the the ways that different people's minds works, and and so like having mm. this image of a hook, like mm. literally a hook, like a fish hook, <laughs> like. Yeah, it's funny because I, I when I first started writing about it, it was the same four steps, but I called it something awful. I'm almost embarrassed to tell you. I, I called it the desire engine. Uh huh. <laughs> this which, is what I've learned which, of too. Course, is like simple language, simple language, like the most simple yeah, language you can think like of. Like nobody remembers better. what the what the hell the desire engine is, but when you called it the hook. You know, then like I don't know, maybe it's because the blues traveler song or something. Like people remember the hook. Like, what's your yeah. hook? Okay, that's that's like. Let me tell you about this book, Hooked. You know, <laughs> like it was uh, it was very easily transferable. I think. I mean, who knows, right? This is all anecdotal. No, it's but, true. Um, it's like it's like Trump knows best. You know, <laughs> like it's like make yeah, it like really that stupid simple. Shit he, and yeah, it. you know, it, crooked Hillary. He says it a thousand times, and it becomes reality for people, even though it's not. But that, you know, well, if you say it enough I, times, people remember it. 
this is why I cringe when I see somebody with a sign or a t-shirt that says like love trumps hate. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that. That's like one of Hillary's um, yeah, yeah. sort of slogans. And it's like the, your opponent's name is in the slogan. Like don't right. do that. Don't. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, you can never underestimate the power of the mere exposure effect. Yeah, it, it, yes, exactly. I mean, that's the, uh, I can't cite the studies necessarily, but I've certainly heard over and over again. It's just like the more time somebody's exposed to something, the more favorably they, they, they start to see it. Right. I mean, that's, I think that's Trump in a nutshell right there. You know, he's, uh, I think it was a New Yorker article or somewhere that I read that Trump is what poor people think of a rich person should should be right it's like a poor person's conception of a rich person because no no rich i know i know billionaires and nobody acts like trump who has a billion dollars it's only people who you know don't know what real rich people are like think that trump is actually what a rich person is but but you know that's uh through the mere exposure effect that's how you get someone to like a person who acts like that yeah so I've, i've started to get really interested in this sort of um, how ideas stick and how they become appealing thing and and it's in, it's interesting as I'm as I'm writing for medium to think about all oh, right wait, wait starting to get a sense of would would somebody uh, highlight this or not but actually you asked about the book so yeah 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 sorry I got off track no that's fine I um, and it so what we ended up the, what they ended up sort of suggesting was that I had these categorizations just from my sample chapter about how doing creative work or doing mentally Mm -hmm. heavy work isn't just to to use cal newport's thing it's it's not just deep work shallow work like Mm -hmm. there are different contours within there so you there is the generation of of a, a rough draft but at the same time there is um doing research so you don't as you're writing a rough draft if you come across a fact that you don't know you don't need to like go look it up. You need to stay on that level. You need to um, put it in brackets and then take it off as a, a separate thing. And and there can be certain times of day and times of the week that are better for you to do that sort of stuff than others. So it's a little bit more mm-hmm. like taking some of these categorizations and writing a chapter on each one uh, and weaving it. And this part pleases me because it's it ties into things that I've fantasize about for such a book and and weaving it in sort of with my own story of kind of the the agony of being a first-time author having not written a book and banging my head against the wall 12 hours a day to only get 15 minutes of flow and then retooling everything to finally get into that um Mm -hmm. and but the um but the tricky part is is the, the the origin story thing. Like the, in their opinion, and I kind of agree. Just saying like, oh yeah, I wrote a book and it was hard, isn't necessarily uh, a strong origin story to to give me authority as an author. Whereas, mm-hmm. um, the fact that I have worked as a designer and I understand to a decent extent how this works and how the economics of um, technology companies work to incentivize to distract Mm -hmm. that I have some sort of perspective there to share that um, about how to how how I struggled myself with those things and how to and how I managed to um, fight back on those things and then eventually uh, work on those the new Google Calendar features to take some of these principles and and put them into an app ironically enough um, mm-hmm. So the story part is compelling to me because I had done a lot of, of some rereading of some books that I had read, um, and one of them in particular, it's it's embarrassing because it's a very it's a very childish and juvenile book, but the game um, by mm. Neil Neil Strauss. That's the way I don't know if you ever read the book before, but it is sort of how to interwoven with story. Mm-hmm. And uh, I find that really compelling. And oddly enough, um, a heartbreaking work of staggering genius. I don't. That might just be because of style, because it's it sort of jumps around and goes off on these philosophical rants and such. 
Uh, mm. Now, uh, such a uh, such a book with you know stories such as that interwoven with how different challenges were met. It's a hard book to categorize, and it's but it, it mm. and it's it, which is what makes it risky, which could possibly make it interesting. Yeah. Oh, I haven't I haven't read it. Maybe I should. It sounds it sounds like it's a good uh, so that's that's the kind of style you want to go for. Um. Yeah, I I I guess I struggle with um, the traditional business book uh, style, where it's very organized and it's very. Here's you could have just condensed this down to a bunch of bullet points, and and the reader could have gotten just as much out of it. Which um, you're not to totally denigrate that. Like that's really useful. Um, but I guess. And I haven't, I haven't totally honed in on my, on my premise, but it might be a part of it. Really, is is that, is that work isn't, is going to increasingly going to be less linear, and more iterative, mm -hmm. and more thrashing around and trying to make that creative epiphany happen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. More and more, as things become automated, as fewer people are making widgets for a living as um, performance in your job becomes more dependent on your ability to look at a problem that you've never had before and that nobody's ever had before and and to be able to come up with something original right um, yeah it's interesting you know, it's, I'm, I'm struggling with the similar we're, we're both uh, revolving around similar um, universes here I guess you could say yeah. Of, well yeah what, of what, a topic. what are you up to you know, I, I, I kind of had a similar journey to you, where, whereas I thought for a long time I was going to write Unhooked. Um, but, uh, and I wrote a ton of articles about, you know, how to put technology in its place and how to, how to manage distraction. And I was kind of like, okay, maybe I started the Frankenstein monster. Not started, but I promoted, uh, you know, I, I, I helped um, uh, incubate uh, a lot of these technologies with the work I was doing with Hooked. And, like, now I'm captured by these technologies and I can't stop using them. But uh, so I wanted to work on, on Unhooked, and I did a talk on it, like a TED style talk on it, and, and wrote a bunch of articles. And I have enough for a book already. Um, but I just not, um, you, you know, I, I think the discovery that I made was that I would get distracted by anything. You know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. I, I took all these steps and I put all these things in my way so that I wouldn't use these technologies. Uh, and I used every, like, app blocking app and I deleted all the apps from my phone and I like just tried to focus and like get my work done and write. But, you know, then I would like, oh, there's a book on the shelf I've been meaning to look at. And, oh, you know, my closets need organizing. I mean, it was so stupid, so ridiculous. <laughs> but like I basically would turn out like I just wasn't into the thing that I was supposed to be working on. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I should have done a better job of, of listening to what I want to do versus what I think I have to do. Um, and it was turned out like it's not really the technology's fault, is what I concluded. It's it's just good old procrastination. Yeah, this reminds me of a piece of feedback that I got uh, when Ryan Holiday reviewed my uh, proposal. It was basically I had this this um, the the metaphor was like the bicycle and the bumper car that Steve Jobs had this vision of a computer as a bicycle for the mind, and and that it would increase our efficiency, but that we have these bumper cars on our just all, all over in our world. And he's like, well, bumper cars are fun. Like, uh -huh, uh -huh. People love bumper cars. Like People yeah. love to b binge on Netflix. Like You can't write a book telling people not to binge on Netflix and not to spend time on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, and then expect that to be the, the crux of it and, and for, for people to be receptive. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, there's a little, so much silliness around technology and pointing the finger at technology. I know we had a big debate last time we talked, but yeah, I mean, g g come on, give me <laughs> like, it's not, you know, we're not freebasing Facebook. We're not, you know, we're not injecting Instagram. Like mm -hmm. I think there, there are people, I wrote this, this article in the Atlantic that, that nobody read, but I thought was, was pretty good, <laughs> which was about, which was about um, like real addicts, uh, people who really cannot stop. 
And people get addicted to all sorts of stuff. And I think like that's the kind of person we, we, we should be worried about. But for everybody else, it's not that – like it, it's, it's a self-control issue. And if it wasn't Facebook, it would be television. If it wasn't television, it would be books. And if it wasn't books, it would be who knows what. Like there's, al- there's just always distractions. And so it's, it's – you know, because we think these things are good and fun and interesting – we blame them when we don't, you know, do something more productive. But that—that's what they're for. They're entertainment, uh, and and so it's. I, I think we we point the finger more than we we should. I mean, these products are good. It's a waking up. Uh, it's a it's a mindfulness problem. It's not so much a. Yeah. It's just a, a universal, timeless problem with presence. Right. Right. I mean, I, I wrote about this in a few articles around. Uh, this concept of acrasia that, that that Aristotle and Socrates were debating around why we tend to do things against our better interests. So like, okay, humans have been struggling with this since forever, right? <laughs> like, it's nothing new that we, whatever it is that we want to do, there's always something there next to us that, that, that makes, that's more appealing uh, when the thing you want to do is different from the thing you need to do. Well, how, how about this? Do you ever think about this? Um, you know, that, that you and I in our respective... Was that your first book? Hooked? Yeah. Yeah, first and only. You and I in our, our respective first and only books, you know, we kind of got lucky. And we took, we, we took advantage of the opportunity. We seized the opportunity and we, we got the thing that we had to say out there. And, and we were fortunate to have a lot of people interested in that. And, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe we don't you know maybe we're not supposed to write another book like has that become our job now that uh just because we've written uh, we've each written books that people cared about that somehow now we have to put effort into mining the nooks and crannies of our psyche and our lives to find something that is presentable is this the type of thing that just causes a sophomore slump uh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's super depressing. I mean, look, it could be. Uh, I've thought about that a lot, and then I drink. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I hope not, because I really enjoy the process of writing, uh, yeah. and I really enjoy when uh, uh, when when what I have a time thinking about is something that other people wanted the answers to as well. I mean, I, 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 like it's, it's professionally the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's really fucking hard. Um, it's not easy, but it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a beautiful sort of torture that I'm sure you've experienced, right? Like it's, you, you know, it's, if it, it, it's, it's really good when you're in that flow state and, and answering a question that you really care about. So I hope not. I mean, I'm still curious about stuff. I still want the answer to stuff. And I guess that's the paradox we were talking about earlier. Or not the paradox, the uh, conflict, I think, that, that I try and keep out of my mind is like, you know, it's more important that I conquer something interesting that I want to wake up and answer every day than something commercial. And so, like, yes. let's say I go and I spent a year, I literally spent a year writing about ethics and uh, how to put technology in its place. It's not going to be a book. But I think I really have a good answer for it now. Like when somebody comes to me and says, I read Hooked and uh, how dare you teach people how to make addictive products, uh, I have a really good answer now that I feel really good about and that I can go to sleep every night, you know, knowing I, 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 I'm not negligent, <laughs> yeah. you know. So even if it's not a book. But so, I mean, so then maybe as – uh, to, to argue against that own possibility is that you know, because you and I have experienced um, saying something that a fair amount of people wanted to hear about and mm-hmm. exploring that, that we've gained a skill that, um, that is, is unique and that lowers our cost of investment in stumbling across something like that again. Is that... Mm possible <laughs> wait so you're saying that we have an asset now mm-hmm. uh because we have an audience well, well no no uh, in our own minds i mean to, to me like writing i don't know if, if this is a uh, the case for you. you you spent a year writing about ethics and stuff now like that mm-hmm. and that's all to come up with this like crisp 
one or two sentences that you can say to a person when when you find yourself in that situation that right. the thinking the exploring of myriad things to develop a cohesive understanding of the way that you think that the world fits together and the mechanics of that world that thinking is is like the valuable thing it's not the fact right. that we sit down and that wait, that one of us can type faster than anybody else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so, so th that, that's Oh, sorry. Is that a skill that we've that we've developed, and is that why we should we should write another? Is is that part of why maybe writing another book is something that either of us should do? I I, I think I want to write another book because um, because uh, I would this is this is my most enjoyable form of finding meaning in life. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's no. You know, I, I'm a pretty staunch atheist, and I, I don't think that there's any higher purpose to being here, uh, that the meaning of, of life is to find meaning in life. And this is the best way I figured out how to find meaning in life, like how to, like, it feels really great to produce something that other people find helpful, uh, and that I want answered, and that's it. <laughs> Honestly, if, like, I could do something else that, that brought me as much satisfaction and, like, gave me purpose then and meaning then maybe i would do that but that's the only reason i, I don't know why I, I mean there's no i think that we just have a we're in a very fortunate position that like we can do this kind of stuff right like you know artists need sponsors and our sponsors are the the public that buys our stuff right uh and and pays us to to think of these ideas and so like that's kind of a luxury that uh, I mean, I don't find it as like a responsibility per se, but more of like, well, what the hell is that else am I going to do yeah, with my like, time? We're you know? here. <laughs> like, we, might, we have to do something. Yeah. So like, what am I going to well. like? Yeah. This this occupy, and that's kind of how I look at. By the way, it just kind of hand in glove with the using technology and 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 you know getting um, becoming you know con uh, consumed with technology. You know, part of what I see when people get consumed in, te in technology when I study people who like use some of these tech, you know, games and, and different apps too much is that for them, it is meaning, you know, like it is purpose just as much, you know, a lot of the folks that are obsessed with, go, with Pokemon Go or World of Warcraft are, are folks that work really shitty jobs during the daytime. And then this is like where their friends are and what provides them meaning and like what makes life worth living for them. And so who am I to say like, no, that's not, you know, that's mm -hmm. not good. You should be writing a book like me. Uh, whereas my silly obsession is just as, as to them looks just as silly as, you know, their obsession. <laughs> right. So, have you so I don't read, know. That's... Uh, have you ever read doing good better? No. I mean, I don't know if you, if you need to read it, but it's a great book, um, by William McCaskill, who I've tried many times to, I tried a few times to try to get him on the podcast, but he's, he's a pretty big deal. Um, it is, uh, basically a framework for deciding, What's what's the most impact that you can have on the world, and hmm. uh, he runs an organization called Eighty Thousand Hours, which helps people find uh, the highest impact career that they can have. And hmm. as a part of that framework, you know, if if a person is comfortable with having a high percentage chance of failure, something like being a an author or being an entrepreneur is, as they rate, one of the you know, higher in the highest impact professions that you that you can have just just by the fact that like okay let's say there's a one percent chance that you have a, a giant impact on the world well that becomes then uh, from a utilitarian standpoint like okay that's the best that you can do if you're comfortable with the fact that you might fail so mm -hmm. that's something that uh, as I've evaluated uh, the best use of my existence has comforted me in, in thinking that I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. That just because I, you, if you, I mean, we've all read books mm -hmm. that just blew our brains apart. Right, right. You never saw the world the same way again. Right, and that's, and that's, that's to me, like, I, I call those mind orgasms. Yeah. Um, and, like, that's, it, it, I would love to figure out how to, give people that <laughs> yeah. because it's, because I value it. Like I really, uh, I just love those and they don't come around very often. 
And sometimes you, you can get them, it doesn't have to be a book. Sometimes it can be an amazing movie or an, a really well-written essay. But yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And like, that's what I aspire to. That's what I would love to do for folks. It, it can be, yeah, it can be a tiny, a tiny article, you know. Uh, yeah. It can be a 500-word medium article that, mm-hmm. that does it uh, sometimes. And so, yeah, that, that's exactly, I think, the thing that drives me, too, is, is being able to, to get that note that, like, whoa, this thing blew my mind. I yeah. haven't seen yeah. such and such thing the same way since, since I read this thing that you wrote. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's crazy shareable, too, right? <laughs> like, when you can do that for folks, with that, I mean, that feels so good for people Yeah. Uh, that, that it takes care of itself. I mean, it doesn't, you know, for all the headline optimization and uh, to, uh, Facebook optimization, you know, all those techniques at the end of the day, if you uh, give yes. people that rare feeling, it, it, it spreads. It's just, it's, it's really hard to do. <laughs> Yeah, because because you have to surprise people. Fundamentally, you have to tell them something they haven't already heard a thousand times. So, you know, if if, if I hear about the fucking marshmallow study at Stanford one more time, you know, I'm gonna scream like I've heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> we all heard it a yeah, thousand yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has to be something surprising and helpful, uh, which is not easy to do. Yeah, the, it, um, there's gonna be a, a podcast coming out tomorrow with Max Temkin from uh, Cards Against Humanity, and. That's an amazing conversation. Have you, have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? You're familiar with that game? No, I, I've heard of it. I haven't played it. Okay, well, it, it just—I mean, it, it was just so, such an explosive thing. And they've done these amazing Black Friday sales. Like mm. one of them was the first one was, oh well, Cards Against Humanity is five dollars more today. <laughs> and then the next year, they sold boxes of holiday bullshit. They they just sold actual bullshit, and then this last year, <laughs> they had the um, Cards Against Humanity, uh, the holiday Give Cards Against Humanity five dollars event sale, <laughs> and we we are the only company that has the integrity to give you nothing, and it costs you only five dollars. <laughs> And they made they they made seventy thousand. They they shut down their uh, their store for that day, and they made seventy thousand dollars of people giving them five dollars and checking a box saying, "I realize I'm never, I'm not getting anything when I'm just giving you five dollars." <laughs> right, and it's wow. just like so. Uh, as he explains it, it's like third level recursive jujitsu marketing because they don't have a, a Black Friday marketing budget. They but at the same time. They don't have a budget for, for for advertising to compete against Mattel or whatever, and at the same time they they you know want to sell their game, and they also hate Black Friday, so mm-hmm. they've they, you know made this 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 brilliant thing that that their customers are a part of right like the, the customers gave them five dollars to be to right. be a part of the joke, right to be a part of the joke. Of just like, oh, that's, that's hilarious. They want amazing. us to give them $5 for nothing. Okay, like one person gave them $5 20 different times. <laughs> because, just, <laughs> because it was like, I imagine just so funny to this person that they just kept <laughs> right. giving them $5. Wow, that's um, phenomenal. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, anyway, that's just to say that's just one of the many ways of 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 tickling the brain that um i mean this is what i try to study day in day out it's the thing that i i, I think like holds me back from short term success that uh that i just trust that will eventually pay off um but if in the, in the meantime i just really enjoy it yeah yeah well, one step at a time. You know, I mean, look look how far it comes since uh, since the last time we checked in. You know, you're you're you've learned a ton. You you growing your audience. You're uh, yeah. I'm I, I'm on the same path, so I don't know what the final destination is. Um, it's great work, I guess, but that's a that's that's not a goal. It's a process. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This this could actually be a, a podcast conversation. This could. This might yeah, go be for pushable. it. <laughs> sure, go for it. I, I, I don't. I don't think I said anything. I, I don't want shared. So why not? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, even the the small penis ham, uh, odors guide is that. Uh... 
<laughs> I, I especially want that published. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the world should know. <laughs> they must know the truth. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. Anything else? What's what else is what else is up? That's about it. I actually have to run here in a minute, but uh, it was it was really good talking to you as always. And anytime you want to catch up, it's just great to kind of hear your journey because we're on such similar paths here. And, yeah. Uh, if, if, of course, if I can be helpful with anything or if you want to collaborate with anything or if you think of any crazy ideas uh, you want to run by each other, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. That would be great. Yeah, I think that would be great. And if, um, if this is published and anybody's listening, I, I think it's always the outsiders that are best at seeing these opportunities. So, mm. um, I mean, I'm, I'm always – I know it's like I've got to get hit over the head by an opportunity before I realize it's there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, likewise, likewise. Awesome. Yeah, we'd love to hear what your listeners think. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for the chat. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. And let's keep in touch. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Your designer has been lying to you. Design doesn't have to be a mystery. You can do it. Get $100 off any pay up front package of my flagship visual design course, D4H Video. Just go to cadavy.net slash video and use the code love it on any pay up front package. Hopefully that conversation gave you some ideas about how to analyze your own book ideas and how you can test some of those ideas specifically on medium.com. For more in-depth analysis of book marketing psychology, Check out episode 29 with Tucker Max, who is a three-time New York Times bestselling author and who helps numerous other authors become successful through his company, Book in a Box. And if you appreciate all the work that goes into making this show, there are a few ways you can help support it. One is to subscribe, whether it's on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, just hit the subscribe button. Another is to rate the show on iTunes, just go to cadavy.net slash iTunes, click on write a review, and click on the star rating. You don't even have to actually write a review. It just takes a couple seconds just to click. The final way is to use my affiliate link when shopping on Amazon. Just go to cadavy.net slash Amazon anytime you shop on Amazon. And that will magically donate a portion of your purchase toward making love your work. And it doesn't cost you anything. And before I go, I've got to ask, do you like books? If you do, sign up for my book recommendations. About 90% will be nonfiction on subjects spanning from biographies to neuroscience. Just go to cadavy.net slash reading and get the first set of recommendations right away. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. The theme music for this show is CNU, performed by the Album Leaf, courtesy of Sub Pop Records. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc.